2, verse 2. Uh, now, let us read it together. Now, the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord. He answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Amen. And today's my sermon title is A Prayer in Time of a Distress. As I mentioned uh, for, uh, this month, I'm going to preach to you about the book of Jonah. Last Sunday, we learned about lessons uh, from, through the chapter 1. And today, we will learn the lessons, the God's magic messages through chapter 2. So we know uh, sometimes we feel uh, God does not exist anymore. It's, it feels like the absence of God. Where is God? We, we know ongoing conflicts, ongoing wars, especially, you know, nowadays, Ukraine invaded by Russia. And the last week, we also we heard about the news, India, so many people, train incidents. I, I heard about the 278 casualties, they passed away. Why so many tragedies happen nowadays? How can we understand the absence of God? How can we understand? So I think that today's scripture let us know about the, the existence of God as well as the prayer, our prayer in a time of distress or our obstacles, our severe situation. How can we pray to God? And you know, today's chapter is a very, very strange. Why? Because when you read, when you open the Bible, you need to understand genre. You know, chapter 1, what do you think about the, the genre? You know, the genre, we can say sci-fi movies, action, or, you know, narratives, or something like that. Chapter 1, when you open the Bible, it's easy to read the Bible. Narratives, right? Storytelling, very easy to listen. On the other hand, Today's chapter, the genre is not narrative. The genre of today's chapter is a form of a prayer. So for a long time, I prepared for today's sermon. And then I read this one, the Hebrew scripture. And can you read it? Okay. <laughs> Here, the Hebrew text narrative is just from the uh, right side to right to the left, we read it in Hebrew. This is a narrative a storytelling, Jonah's story. And suddenly, chapter 2, the form changes like this way. We call it the poem or a form of a prayer. And furthermore, you see that uh, when you open the Bible, the Bible, uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, begins with uh, God commanded the fish. But English translation begins with just chapter 2, verse 1. But when you read, so that, that's why I chose today's scripture, Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. That is the beginning of today's prayer. And beginning is, God commanded a fish and swallowed Jonah. And then the last part, Jonah, as well, you know, God commanded a fish and fish vomited. So that's why the whole form we call it inclusive. The long, long time of ancient near the Eastern writers they used this literary, you know, literary method, rhetoric, you know, to better understand God's message. So it begins with chapter one, verse seventeen, and the last part of chapter two. So I ask you, do you believe, you know? It's some, some unbelievers, they say, to Jonah, the story is a fairy story, a novel. What do you think? Jonah, he was thrown into the deep sea and swallowed by a big fish. Can you understand? Can you trust the story? So that's why so many 
on believers days, there's a fairy tale. You know, it's not true. But I bought this one, the news. In 2019, a driver, a diver, uh, he fell under a cliff and then he was swallowed by hail. And then I also bring the, the clip. Uh, would you show the, the clip? Yeah. He, he confessed uh, his own you know, story. So here, outside. outside. Yeah, Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> I will show you later. So exactly the Sky News the, uh, interviewed one, one, one person, he's a South African, his name is uh, let's see, uh, uh, Reiner, uh, Reiner, and he had been filming, and then while he filming, a whale emerged and engulfed him, and then opened jaws, and the whale took him into the ocean, but then spat him out. And he mentioned uh, not delicious. That's why spat him out. <laughs> and yeah, the story of Jonah is not a fairy tale. The true, true story. So for a long, long time, many people, they like the story. So today, through chapter two, we will learn how to pray in times of distress. So I will tell you number one, the point number one, so let us read it together. Pray to God in time of distress with an honesty. Jonah's his journey begins with his refusal to obey God, leading to his being thrown into the sea by sailors. So in chapter one, Jonah never, no, only chapter one, verse one, Jonah communicated with God. And once he refused to listen to the word of God, he stopped talking with God. And then he thrown into the sea by sailors. And then, however, in chapter 2, we find Jonah praying to God from the belly of the fish. So let us read Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Ready? So, he said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I call for help, and you listen to my cry. Here, from deep in the realm of the dead, probably indicates the belly of a fish. But it's weird. In Hebrew, I translated, this is an interesting translation, so let us read together. And he said, I call to the Lord, from my distress, and he answered me. From the belly of our shore, I cried out for help. You listen to my voice. So Jonah, he expressed the belly of a fish differently like this, in the, from the belly of a shore. Have you heard about shore? It's a bit weird. But the ancient Near Eastern text, the especially Greek text, they translate Shual as Hades, the hell. But here, the Jewish people, they say Shual represents a place of darkness and stillness associated with death. Jonah, he experienced his own Shual in the belly of the fish, symbolizing his own death. Yet, even in his, you know, the, the higher situation, he persists in praying to God. Despite the feeling abandoned and engulfed by darkness, Jonah, he maintained, he started communicating with God, having faith in his response. Furthermore, in verse 4 to 7, Jonah, he vividly describes his distress. So let us read a little, a little bit wrong, but let us read together. I said, I have been banished from your sight. 
Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters swept me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was left from my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth vanished barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was giving away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Jonah, he feels God's absence, sinking down to the depth and barred from the earth. Nevertheless, he continues to pray God, directing his prayers toward God's holy temple. I found that this is a very important. When you feel the absence of God, you should pray to God exactly in detail. Jonah talked about his situation. I feel like a sinking down. I feel the absence of God. Every Sunday I receive your prayer request. So many people you talk about in detail your personal story. Likewise, I recommend you to pray to God in detail. Describe exactly your feelings. Jonah, he talks his feelings frankly, with honesty. God, listen to me, my situation, something like that. You have to communicate with God. When you feel I'm so dangerous, when you feel I'm in time of distress, distress that time, it's time to pray to God. It's time to communicate with God. Hallelujah. So that's why Jonah's prayer is very important to know God's message. I know several times I mentioned about my feelings while I was writing my dissertation. Over nine years in the U.S., I spent you know, writing dissertation is very important. Once I finish my dissertation, that which means I can come back to Korea. I can see my family. How about the KDI members? If you not write your thesis paper, you cannot go to your country. I know. <laughs> Troy, Salita, you plan to go back to your country August, right? Yeah, I know. I heard about the Troy next month. He will come to his country. And if Salita does not finish her thesis, you are alone. <laughs> right? So we, I had to finish my dissertation, but my school required a minimum is over 300 pages. Oh my goodness. So in 2017, the fourth semester, I just wrote my paper only 120 pages, only focused on ancient Near Eastern texts, Mesopotamian texts. But that time, I was, I felt, I was very stressful. At that time, I got the you know, pain, the back pain, so-called spine, spinal stenosis. Nowadays, Elder Melvin, he got the spinal stenosis. But anyway, so I could not sleep well. Every hour, I, I had to walk, wake up. And then, that time, I started praying to God. God, I want to miss, I want to see my father and mother. I want to see my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law that time got stroke. And I had to take care of my family. I started communicating with God. God, please help me. Listen to my prayer. I cried out for help. And then God responded, urging me to read the Bible. Open the Bible. Read the Bible. And I delved into the scripture in detail. And then I could write over 350 pages. Hallelujah. <laughs> Once I read the Bible, God let me know the key how to write dissertation. You need to communicate with God in a time of your distress. Talking to God honestly. And furthermore, I felt God's perfect touch on my back. You know, I, I will let you know how to, you know, uh, heal your back. Okay, how to heal your back? Kneel before God. And then, like this, hold your hands. Honestly pray to God. And your, your head, like this way. And, yeah. <laughs> Three hours a day or two hours a day, you pray to God, kneel down, and 
your back pain will be healed. And the Melvin, <laughs> I'm all <always> in you. <laughs> I got a picture of my hands and knees. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kneel your and then pray to God. Honestly, communicate with God. And God will touch your back. And God will heal your back pain. Hallelujah. And let us read the Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. Oh, here. Let's read together. Ready? And, and call, call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Remember that we should pray during times of trouble. In the time of your distress, you should call God in the day of trouble, and God will say to you, I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Hallelujah. And lastly, let us read together. Rise above your own distress, by remembering the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God does not abandon us. And let us read Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Remember, three days and three nights. And here, Lord provided it. New International, you know, uh, English version translated provided, but the Hebrew in Hebrew commanded. God commanded the fish, and that fish swallowed Jonah. And the last verse of chapter two, as well, God commanded the fish vomit. All plan commanded by God. We are living on the way, you know, on the hand of God. God's plan. God commanded you. And God commanded, think about your obstacles also. God commanded obstacles and as well God will resolve your own stress, your own obstacles. Hallelujah. God commanded. So Jonah's prayer begins with chapter 1 verse 17 and concludes with chapter 2 verse 10. As I mentioned, it is so-called, we call it inclusio, a literary device to make readers remember the ideas present. And also here, three days and three nights. What does it mean? What, is, what does it symbolize? Do you know three days and three nights? Who? Three days and three nights. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Three days and three nights. That's why when you open the Bible in the New Testament, Jesus, he mentioned like this. So let us live together. He answered, O wicked and adulterous generation, ask us for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights, the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of a Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus, he references Jonah's prophecy being confronted by Pharisees and teachers of the law. And Jonah's prophecy served as an indication of Jesus Christ, his own death. However, we, as we know, Jesus, he resurrected from the tomb after three days. I think all people, all human beings, we all, all have three days and three nights. Your own three days and three nights. To me, I think 10 years ago, my appendicitis blew up, and that time I felt like three days and three nights. And your own suffering could be, which I call you, three days and three nights. But three days, your suffering is not long. After three days and three nights, God will raise your hallelujah. God will hold your hand and you see the kingdom of God. And He will raise you up. You feel like the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your own revival. I hope, I pray for all of you. You experience God's resurrection, the revival, or your own revival. Hallelujah. My friends, our God will raise you up from your own tomb, your own shore, your own fish. 
Your period of darkness and death will last for three days and three nights. As Christians, we must remember that we live according to God's plan. He will raise you up. He will breathe new life into you. Hallelujah. He will raise you up. And then all the obstacles, you know, like a fish, vomit, and you will enjoy God's wonderful new life. Hallelujah. So now, let us pray the song together. The power of your love.
How about praying together? You think about uh, your own sufferings. Three days and three nights, Jonah, he prayed in the belly of his uh, the fish. He thought, almost dead. Sink down. The mountain, then is the mountain. Sink down. Until when I had to pray to you toward the holy temple. But after three days and three nights, he could see the sky, the land. Think about the Jesus Christ, his own sufferings. Three days and three nights, his own death. Many people judged him and crucified him, killed him. They say, Jesus is dead. But after three days and three nights, resurrected. God raising you up. Think about your own resurrection. Think about your own revival. God will raise you up. Your own three days, your own three nights, but after three nights, you will experience God's wonderful miracle. How about let's pray together. Father, think about my own sufferings, three days, three nights. Please help me out. Let's pray together. Father, we feel our own sufferings, our own three days, three nights. We are suffering. We feel like the absence of God. But I know we trust, we believe in Jesus Christ. My God, as you raise Jesus Christ up from the tomb, you raise us up. We trust you, your word. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for today's message of prayer in time of distress. If we forget you and succumb to our desires, neglecting to pray to you during times of distress, please forgive us. May we approach you in prayer, acknowledging your presence in the holy temple of the kingdom of God. Let us communicate with you honestly, crying out for your help, salvation in our moments of distress. Remind us that we live according to your plan. Strengthen us, raise us up, just as you raised your son, Jesus Christ, from the tomb. May we experience your wonderful miracles, salvation in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh,